The International Court of Justice is the primary judicial branch of the United Nations UN. Seated in the Peace Palace in The Hague, Netherlands, the court settles legal disputes submitted to it by states and provides advisory opinions on legal questions submitted to it by duly authorized international branches, agencies, and the UN General Assembly. Established in 1945 by the UN Charter, the court began work in 1946 as the successor to the Permanent Court of International Justice. The statute of the International Court of Justice, similar to that of its predecessor, is the main constitutional document constituting and regulating the court. The court's workload covers a wide range of judicial activity. After the court ruled that the United States' covert war against Nicaragua was in violation of international law, Nicaragua v. United States, the United States withdrew from compulsory jurisdiction in 1986 to accept the court's jurisdiction only on a case-by-case -case basis. Chapter 14 of the United Nations Charter authorizes the UN Security Council to enforce court rulings. However, such enforcement is subject to the veto power of the five permanent members of the Council, which the United States used in the Nicaragua case. The IC is composed of 15 judges elected to nine-year terms by the UN General Assembly and the UN Security Council from a list of people nominated by the national groups in the Permanent Court of Arbitration. The election process is set out in Articles 4-19 of the IC Statute. Elections are staggered with five judges elected every three years to ensure continuity within the court. Should a judge die in office, the practice has generally been to elect a judge in a special election to complete the term. No two judges may be nationals of the same country. According to Article 9, the membership of the court is supposed to represent the main forms of civilization and of the principal legal systems of the world. Essentially, that has meant common law, civil law and socialist law now post-communist law. There is an informal understanding that the seats will be distributed by geographic regions so that there are five seats for Western countries, three for African states including one judge of Francophone civil law, one of Anglophone common law and one Arab, two for Eastern European states, three for Asian states and two for Latin American and Caribbean states. The five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council France, Russia, China, the United Kingdom, and the United States always have a judge on the court, thereby occupying three of the Western seats, one of the Asian seats and one of the Eastern European seats. The exception was China, which did not have a judge on the court from 1967 to 1985 because it did not put forward a candidate. Article 6 of the statute provides that all judges should be elected regardless of their nationality among persons of high moral character who are either qualified for the highest judicial office in their home states or known as lawyers with sufficient competence in international law. Judicial independence is dealt with specifically in Articles 16-18. Judges of the IC are not able to hold any other post or act as counsel. In practice, Members of the court have their own interpretation of these rules and allow them to be involved in outside arbitration and hold professional posts as long as there is no conflict of interest. A judge can be dismissed only by a unanimous vote of the other members of the court. Despite these provisions, the independence of IC judges has been questioned. For example, during the Nicaragua case, the United States issued a communique suggesting that it could not present sensitive material to the court because of the presence of judges from Eastern Bloc states. Judges may deliver joint judgments or give their own separate opinions. Decisions and advisory opinions are by majority, and, in the event of an equal division, the president's vote becomes decisive, which occurred in the legality of the use by a state of nuclear weapons in armed conflict opinion requested by WHO, IC reports 66. Judges may also deliver separate dissenting opinions. Article 31 of the statute sets out a procedure whereby ad hoc judges sit on contentious cases before the court. 
The system allows any party to a contentious case if it otherwise does not have one of that party's nationals sitting on the court to select one additional person to sit as a judge on that case only. It is thus possible that as many as 17 judges may sit on one case. The system may seem strange when compared with domestic court processes, but its purpose is to encourage states to submit cases. For example, if a state knows that it will have a judicial officer who can participate in deliberation and offer other judges local knowledge and an understanding of the state's perspective, it may be more willing to submit to the jurisdiction of the court. Although this system does not sit well with the judicial nature of the body, it is usually of little practical consequence. Ad hoc judges usually, but not always, vote in favor of the state that appointed them and thus cancel each other out. Generally, the court sits as full bench, but in the last 15 years, it has on occasion sat as a chamber. Articles 26-29 of the statute allow the court to form smaller chambers, usually three or five judges, to hear cases. Two types of chambers are contemplated by Article 26, firstly, chambers for special categories of cases, and second, the formation of ad hoc chambers to hear particular disputes. In 1993, a special chamber was established, under Article 26 1 of the Ix statute, to deal specifically with environmental matters although it has never been used. Ad hoc chambers are more frequently convened. For example, chambers were used to hear the Gulf of Maine case, Canada slash US. In that case, the parties made clear they would withdraw the case unless the court appointed judges to the chamber acceptable to the parties. Judgments of chambers may either less authority than full court judgments or diminish the proper interpretation of universal international law informed by a variety of cultural and legal perspectives. On the other hand, the use of chambers might encourage greater recourse to the court and thus enhance international dispute resolution.